Hello and welcome to another Warhammer 40k and Pearl Guard Tactics video with me, Oddworld Inhabitant, as your host. Now today we are going to cover one of the most iconic vehicles in the whole of Warhammer 40k. Not just the Imperial Guard, but the whole of Warhammer 40k, and that is the Lehman Russ tank. The Lehman Russ has just been around for so very, very long, not just in the fluff, but we're talking in real life, in the game, Warhammer 40k. Um, it's absolutely iconic. It is a tank so badass that it is named after a Space Marine Primark, which not many of the vehicles can have that claim to fame. It is the only uh, Imperial Guard tank that at some point the Space Marines actually had access to. The Space Wolves used to have access to Lehman Russ demolishers. Now, it's even though tanks and vehicle and bog standard vehicles aren't actually very good in Warhammer 40k anymore the Lehman Russ is still a worthwhile investment now I, and, you know, whilst pure infantry is the best kind of Imperial Guard army and I would argue the most competitive it's you can't go wrong with a, with a Lehman Russ in your, in your army list and I would argue that you are not a true Imperial Guard commander if you don't own at least a pair of these bad boys you know, a thousand point list, seven fifty point list. You want one, anything above seven fifty. You want at least two, three, four. You know, these things, they'll still do you proud. And so what? I'm, and what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to cover the different kinds of Lehman Russ, and then I'm going to explain why, out of all the vehicles in the 40k, why I think the Lehman Russ can still find a place in a guard list. Okay, so. There are seven different kinds of Lehman Russ. Uh, they can sort of widely be or broadly put into two categories. One is the standard variant and one is the siege variant. Um, and there isn't much difference in the two, uh, except the siege variants tend to be, tend to be shorter ranged, but with better rear armor. And the standard variants tend to be longer ranged with weaker back armor. They also tend to be cheaper. So the basic Lehman Russ battle tank is called the is called the Lehman Russ battle tank. And what do you get for that? Well, it costs you 150 points, and that's the benchmark. All the other vehicles you'll see are basically either up or down of that benchmark. So if it's better than the Lehman Russ. It's, a, it's better than a basic battle tank. It's a, It costs more than 150. If it's considered worse, if its main weapon is considered worse, it's below 150 points. It's kind of like how Space Marines are the baseline for most things in 40k, their points cost. So what do you get for 150 points? Well, you get Blizzard Skill 3. It's not a big deal. But you get front armor 14 and then side armor 13 and then rear armor 10. And you get three hull points for that. And... It comes with a, a battle cannon. Battle cannons, if they are fairly widespread throughout the uh, 40k, but it's a large blast, strength 8, AP 3. Your Lehman Russ battle tank is your jack of all trades. If you take one in the list, it's never going to disappoint you. It's never going to blow you away. It's never going to be the most the top performing unit in your list, but it's never going to disappoint you either. It's always going to consistently lob out shells always going to consistently you know kill it you know on average kill two to three guys every turn you know um it do, it can do it it does its job well which is jackable trades master of none the one area it does specialize in killing is it's obviously anti-space marine any space marines out in out of cover you turn a battle can on them they die uh, because it, with all the you know strength eight AP three, it's also ordnance, which means when you hit vehicles, you roll two d six and pick the highest dice for armor penetration, which is fantastic. And it's also got a staggering seventy two inch range, the standard battle cannon. I think apart from the Vanquisher, that is the longest range of any the Lehman Rusters. This what it, what this what the Lehman battle tank is good at is sitting back. Uh, and just lobbing shells every turn. But at the same time, this is why it's a jack of all trades. The Lehman Russ is also the, the you know the 
basic Leavenworth battle tank is perfectly happy as part of an armoured push. You know, ideally it'll be it, it'll be sitting back providing fire support. But if you need to get if you need to get that thing up in your enemy's face, don't be afraid to do it. That 72 inch range is just there to guarantee that you're able to shoot whatever you want, whenever you want. Okay. So that's the baseline. It's good at a lot of things. It's bad. It's not very bad at anything, but it's not fantastic at anything either. So the next one is another standard variant, and it is the Leavenworth Exterminator. And again, it's Blizzard Skill 3. It's front armor 14, side armor 13, rear armor 10, three hold points. It's only 130 points. But in reality, it's 150 points. And you may be asking, why is it 150 points in reality? Because you're never going to take this tank without slapping on heavy bolt sponsors. And the reason you're going to put heavy bolt sponsors on is because it has as its main weapon an exterminator autocannon, which is a twin linked four shot autocannon, strength seven, AP four. It's not ordnance. So unlike the basic Lehman Russ, where you don't really want to put sponsors on it, because if you do and you fire your main battle cannon, it then means that your whole weapon and your sponsors are snap firing. Ordnance causes all of the weapons to snap fire. So you don't really want to put sponsors on anything that's ordnance, but on the Lehman Exterminator, you don't want to leave home without the heavy bolters, because this thing is designed for shredding infantry any infantry out there terminators centurions down to guardsmen space marines termagants grunt grots orcs it's going to win them all on twos with its main gun strength seven ap4 <clears throat> skatari particularly hate this little bastard because or this big bastard because it just it negates their instant death it, it negates their feel no pain through instant death and it negates their armor saves through ap4 slap on the heavy bolters and you've got a unit that's pumping, you know, three heavy bolters, three shots each, nine shots, plus four that are twin linked from your uh, main weapon, turret weapon. You're looking at 13 shots, all designed for anti-infantry. This tank is also considered a jack of all trades, master of none, because of its auto cannon. But I would argue that its main primary function is to glance light transports to death, rhinos, uh, to a certain extent, um, chimeras and wave serpents and devil fish, you know, with the main cannon, the whole bullets can't help there. But generally, I wouldn't use it for light, I wouldn't really use it for transport hunting, I would use it for infantry shredding. You, you shoot this thing at a squad of infantry, be it space marines or whatever, you're gonna you're going to have an impact. It's just, it's basically, if you've got a squad of space marines sat in cover, this one's actually probably better because the space marines will get a cover save versus the ordnance weapon, uh, so you might as well just put more shots into them. Okay? Exterminator, another jack of all trades, massive non, but definitely leans on its tendency to be an anti-infantry vehicle. Can also, in a pinch, be anti-flyer because of a twin-linked autogunner, but that's not its primary role. The next one is the Leavenworth Vanquisher, is another standard variant. It's Blitz Skill 3, front armor 14, side armor 13, rear armor 10, hull points 3, 135 points. I consider the Leavenworth Vanquisher to be, unless, unless used in a formation or on a tank commander, I consider the Leavenworth Vanquisher to be the weakest of all the Leavenworths because its main weapon is a single 72 inch strength 8 AP2 melter shot. It's essentially melter. It rolls two it, it rolls 2d6 and pick and 2d6 and adds them together for armor penetration, but you don't need to be in half range like a melter. It just it fires an armor bane shot. The problem is it fires one shot. And again, this one is 135 points because you're going to really spend 150 points on it because what you're going to do is put a las cannon on the hull that costs you 15 points to put a las cannon on the hull oh sorry 10 points to put a las cannon on the hull 
Okay? So for 145 points, you're going to get two shots. Only one of those is going to hit, and you've got no guarantee to pen in the armor. It's just not worth it. It's not... The newest Vanquisher in the fluff is the premier anti-tank weapon of the Imperial Guard. Um, you know, apparently all tank commanders use Levenrus Vanquishers. In reality, on the tabletop, you'll very, very rarely see a Levenrus Vanquisher fielded. Their, their ballistic, ballistic Skill 3 just cripples them. If they're Ballistic Skill 4, they'd be worth it. If they're Ballistic, you know, there is a way of making them Ballistic Skill 4, you have to take a certain formation. And I'm going to experiment with taking five of the bastards and giving them whole lads cannons and sponsor multi melters and just run a tank that can put out four uh, strength eight AP one or two shots a turn. That's worth it. <laughs> Otherwise, I would honestly avoid the Leon's Frank Chris. The all the other ones have a purpose. This is the only one where I would say avoid completely and utterly unless. In a format, in a certain formation, or on a tank commander. So the this the next tank is the Leonus Eradicator, and this is the last of the standard variants. And this is again, this is skill three, 14, 13, 11, uh, 10 for the armor, whole points three. But this is the cheapest Leonus. It's only a hundred and twenty points. It's an absolute steal. You can get a piece of armor for you're the only Imperial Guard, the only army. In the whole of 40k, they can get a piece of armor 14 armor for 120 points. It's an absolute steal. It also happens to be one of my favorite tanks. Its main cannon is only strength 6, AP 4, but it's large blast. It's not ordnance, which is both a blessing and a curse, but it ignores cover. It's 36 inch range. This is a fantastic little workhorse my recommended loadout for this if we're taking 150 points as being the as you know the, my, the bare minimum you want to take on this is a pair of heavy bolters i should say recommended loadout is you actually take the pair whole heavy bolter heavy bolter sponsons eradicator cannon and a heavy stubber if you've got five points left over a dozer blade because this thing's probably going to be getting close to the enemy 36 inch range isn't isn't that long ranged Now it does it does compete somewhat with the Hellhound because the Hellhound has a you know it's a fast vehicle it's got a shorter range it's got less armor the Hellhound but it's when it when you shoot that torrent weapon that strength 6 AP4 torrent flamer it's guaranteed to hit whereas what you're paying for in the eradicator is you're paying the same price as a Hellhound but what you're paying for is reliable armor a Hellhound will get somewhere quickly kill something and then probably die and eradicate will get there slowly laying down firepower chipping away and will probably survive but will not do it won't have one big money shot like the hellhound will have a money shot and lemus vanquisher will just consistently chip away this is i would argue it's very this is the best anti-infantry one out there because a lot of the time infantry is going to be sat in cover this is actually, the Eradicator is actually surprisingly, absolutely a must-have when facing off against Tau. Because all their marker drones, their pathfinders, all those guys, things that are going to be putting marker lights on you. Things that are going to be causing you to have some serious issues. They are killed very easily by the Lemurus Eradicator. So, it's almost a jack-of-all-trades. It's almost... But if its weapon is only shown six, it's not quite. It's still, it's still a worthwhile tank. And there's a lot of people out there who just don't use it. A lot of people just don't even don't even know it exists. Honestly, to all you veteran guard players, to all you new guard players now, having a single Lemus Eradicator in your collection is worthwhile. It is cheap for 140 points. You will get an absolutely fantastic deal. You know, Eradicator plus Heavy Bolt sponsors. And it will not let you down. I promise you, it will not let you down. You know, it's not going to have the balls out destruction that the basic battle tank can have. It's not going to have the shredding and anti-transport capability of the exterminator. But it is, honestly, it's just reliable. 
you know, you, 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 even against Facebook, you slap that template on there, it's wounding them on, it's wounding them on twos. It's worth it. And it's cheap. <laughs> so, we get now onto the Siege variants. And the first one of these is, it's, it's, it's the Lehman Russ with the badass, the most badass reputation. It's the Lehman Russ Demolisher. The Demolisher is, along with the Lehman Russ Battle Tank, the oldest Lehman Russ variant out there. They were the only, I think they were the only two that were, that came along in the first book, the first, the first Imperial Guard Codex. Frankshire may be on there, but I know for sure that the Lehman Russ Battle Tank and the Lehman Russ Demolisher were in there from the beginning. Um, their apps, the Lehman Russ Demolisher is, it was so good, the Space Marines had to nick it and make a, and make the Vindicator. That's how good it was. Okay. So you get Armour 14, 13, and then 11 on the back. So it's got that extra armour on the back, which makes it a little bit less. It makes it, with the new FAQ, it makes it almost immune to crack grenades. Almost. But it's 170 points. Now, what do you get for 170 points? You Until D weapons came out, and until Tau came out, you get the cannon that was renowned for being the most powerful gun in 40k. Oh yeah. The Demolisher Cannon. Strength 10. AP 2. Large Blast Ordnance. This thing had such a badass reputation. Before D Weapons, before Haywire, we're talking 4th edition and back, back you know, 5th edition as well. But especially 4th edition. 4th and 5th edition. These things will renown. If you, if you saw a demolisher coming towards you. Hell, if you saw a pair of demolishers coming towards you. You knew that part of your line. You knew that part of your army was fucked. There's no way around it. These get things were death incarnate. However, the gun only has a 24 inch range. It's very short ranged. But they used to be so badass unfortunately it suffered a slight fall from grace you can't go wrong with a strength 10 ap2 large blast don't don't say i'm poo-pooing that but it's 170 points for a tank that dies just as easily as 120 point eradicator that's the problem with it it's just too expensive and the next big problem with it is that it can't target invisible units Visible Death Star comes running at it. It's just got to sit there looking pretty. So it has fallen from grace. If it was cheaper, if it was 160, hell, if it was 150 points, well, let's not get carried away. If it was 160 points, I would consider it very worthwhile. As it is, it's 170. It's just slightly too expensive. But, again, you can't go wrong with it. I would say, I would argue it's the third best tank that we have. The third best Lehman Russ. No, you know what? I'm going to say second. Joint second. Hmm, let me think about this actually. Okay. When taken as a heavy support choice, I would say the Lehman Russ Demolisher is the second best tank we have. And the first best tank being the Lehman Russ Battle Tank just because of how much of a jack of all trades it is. If we take the Lehman Russ as part of a, a, a HQ section with Paskin, it drops down to the third because of the next Lehman Russ. The Lehman Russ Punisher, which is my favourite Lehman Russ. Again, it's a siege variant, so 14, 13, 11 on the armour. But it comes with the Punisher Cannon. The Punisher Cannon is strength 5 AP dash. That doesn't sound very impressive, does it? How about the fact that it fires 20 shots? This thing fires more than a Vulcan Megabolter on a, on a Warhound Titan. <laughs> it's crazy. It's strength 5 AP dash, so it's not going to do very much damage to vehicles. It's 140 points. So it does compete with the exterminator for anti-infantry capabilities. But this thing is absolutely fantastic. 
it's actually better as an HQ choice. The way you want to run this, if you're going to take a Punisher, if you're going to take a pair of Punishers, don't take them in heavy support. Okay, take them in your HQ slot and put Pask in the Lehman Russ Punisher. I've mentioned this before in one of the videos, but Pask gives that tank rending with preferred enemy and reroll armor penetration. So this thing goes from suddenly being a premier anti-infantry unit to a premier anti-tank unit. Okay, legitimate way to run, and Lehman Russ Punisher is the only Lehman Russ out there where the more points you sink into it, the better it gets. I would most you know I you know me I always argue keep them cheap keep them spammable you know buy two tanks for the price of one. Lima's Punisher is the only time where I would say it's worth investing the points in. The more you spend, the better you get. My favorite, if I was my the best way to run a Lima's Punisher it might be the most expensive, but it's the best way is to take Lima's Punisher, put Pask in it, give it a whole last cannon, and whole multi melt and sponsor multi melters and a dozer blade that thing will reliably kill a knight a turn depending on his shield rolls okay that's how good this thing is you got you know it's just it's great there's not i can't say much more about it it's absolutely fantastic if you're any imperial guard player with assault knows that paskin a punisher nicknamed the paskinisher you can't quite say it. The Pascasha is the possibly the best HQ choice we have out there. I don't like running him, obviously, when I'm using a pure infantry army, but I would not deny the fact that he is absolutely balls out amazing. So Libra's Punisher is fantastic, but best taken in an HQ choice because otherwise you're relying on Blitz Skill 3, which means you're only hitting with 10 shots. So it's not that good. If it's not that good as an HQ choice, as a heavy support choice, it's much better as an HQ choice. Okay, so the last Lehman Russ we have is Lehman Russ Executioner, and that's armor 14, 13, 11. This thing used to be the best tank, just the best tank ever. It was, it had, if it fires, it's got a plasma cannon for a turret, but it fires three shots. It used to not get hot. Now it does get hot. I'm actually not going to spend much time on it. Uh, the Lehman Russ executioner is amazing at killing space marines and it's amazing at killing monstrous creatures but if you take the best loadout for it which is um plasma cannon turret plus plasma cannon sponsons it's expensive it's 185 points and it will probably glance itself to death by turn four <laughs> you know your opponent doesn't even need to do any damage like any damage being done by your opponent it will glance itself to death by turn four because of gets hot it will just you're taking five gets hot for a turn. If you're taking an Eemus Executioner, take a squad of serve, take a squad of serve to the tech freeze alongside it. At least then it'll stay alive. And that's it. So as you can see by the 20 minutes that I have explained every Lehman Russ why it's good, why it's bad, I'll just do a quick summary, 10 seconds of competitive or not competitive. Lemus Battle Tank, competitive, Lemus Exterminator semi-competitive to competitive Log i would say local tournaments are best you're going to struggle at big national tournaments there's vanquisher completely and utterly worthless do not take it unless you take it in the cadian uh, battle group armored formation then potentially could be good but still not great Lever eradicator semi-competitive to competitive where if you know you're going to be facing a lot of tau a must have Liam was Demolisher, competitive, no doubt about it. It may be pricey, it still gets the fucking job done. Liam was Punisher, in a heavy support choice, uncompetitive, not worth taking. In the Blizzard Skill 4 formation, the Cadian one, or in a heavy support, in a HQ choice with Pask and a Punisher, super competitive. Executioner, not competitive. It will kill it. You are paying too many points for a tank that will kill itself. I'll quickly go very quickly again. I also I'll quickly go through what uh, Lemurus comes with as standard. It comes with heavy bolters, searchlight, and smoke launchers. Uh, searchlight is actually fantastic. Never forget your searchlights because what it means is um, during night fighting you can fire all your weapons, but also before you do that you can choose for free to illuminate your opponent. And what that does is you choose one unit 
but your luminous is firing at and you say I've illuminated that unit and that unit no longer benefits from night fighting very good for if you're taking on unit, uh, elder or tau that will like or even space marines uh, bikers any unit that relies on jinking you can reduce its jink but if it's night fighting they don't get a two up jink or a three up jink they're stuck on a four up jink it's very powerful smoke launchers are great if your tank takes a, a big hit and is uh, stuck uh, you know if it's a lemon rust and it's uh, it's stunned or shaken and can't fire its template uh, then you might as well pop smoke and it gives you five plus cover save okay so we've gone over every Lehman Russ. We've gone over whether they're competitive. We've gone over the ideal loadouts, and we've gone over your best. You know what's your best bang for your buck. Um, Lehman Russes have a big op lot of options for a uh, lot of additional options as well. They can take heavy flamers on the whole for free. Last cannons for ten points. Heavy flamer sponsors, very rare but actually good. Uh, heavy bolter sponsors, multi mounted plasma cannons. Um, I would argue, I would say the heavy bolts are the best sponsors. If you, you just they're good. Now, I want to cover this next bit in two minutes. Why are Lehman Russes still competitive? Why consider them? Well, it's the fact that they're so damn cheap for what you're getting. Even even though Grav is out there, even though Haywire is out there, even though D weapons are out there. I, Armor 14 is still good. What you've got to remember is that a lot of armies don't act, a lot of armies in a tournament, you know, you've got the big three, which are Tau, Space Marines, and Elder. They don't have access to to D weapons. They they you know they, they, but the other armies out there don't have access to D weapons. If you're playing I would argue in a tournament, Lemus is lose a lot of their you you know awesomeness because of those Grav D and Haywire. And gores of the Necrons. But if you're playing in a meta that doesn't have a lot of those things, then the Lemus Battle Tank is a must have. Armor 14 in a normal, traditional meta where LAS cannons and rocket launchers are your enemy's premier anti tank, the Lehman Rust is an absolute death machine because your opponent, at best, is going to damage it on a 5 plus. Because of armor 14, last kind of strength 9. Most of the time, your opponent is going to try and glance them to death. Okay? The reason why the Lehman Russ is competitive is because you're getting an absolutely awesome gun platform. Because don't forget, it's a heavy vehicle, which means that even when it moves, it counts as being stationary. So you can move a Lehman Russ Exterminator, for example move it six inches and it can fire all its weapons at full ballistic skill okay so these things are tough as nails they're surprisingly mobile because you've got no excuse really not to move them six inches a turn and they put out a hell of a lot of daca okay now they do become vastly less competitive when if you're facing a, if you're a regular opponent or regular opponents when a lot of grab a lot of haywire a lot of d your lean are going to struggle just because they'll die so quickly. If you're facing off against people that use LAS cannons or missile launchers, you'll find the Lehman Russ is a must have vehicle. They are just, to, I'm not going to repeat myself, to, to sum it up, why is Lehman Russ awesome? Three reasons. One, fantastically cheap for what you're paying. Even the Demolisher is a good deal. It's a bad deal in comparison to other Lehman Russes. It's a good deal in the general scheme of things. So they're cheap. They are hard as nails. Unless your opponent is rocking absolute cheese, your Lehman Russ will probably survive every game. And three, absolutely loads of DACA and mobile. So they're cheap, they're tough, and they put up a hell of a lot of firepower. My last closing comment on this is, you will, if you take a Lehman Russ in your list, you will never be disappointed. It will always do its job and it will always make your opponent sweat. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you guys next time.